Space Blue. Mmm, dreamy. We're back with another mini PC review, and this time it has a CPU we haven't checked out yet. So, this should be fun for the both of us. Or me at least. That's good too, right? Okay, more right after this message. The Ezus Rec Experts screen recorder is an all-in-one solution for recording everything on your screen, whether it's online meetings, gameplay, tutorials, and more. Rec Experts supports 4K and 60fps in various video formats, and there are plenty of additional features, including a simple video editor to clean up your recording. Give it a test run with the link in the video description. Today we're checking out the GMK Tech Knuckbox K7 Mini PC, packing Intel's i5 13500H. 12 cores, 16 threads with Intel XE graphics. And since I've already reviewed a Mini with the 12500H, we can see how much this one's improved over the previous generation. The K7 comes with three different color schemes, steel or space blue, and black, which is only available on Amazon. Both the blue ones look nice, but I prefer this space blue. The K7 starts at $340 US for the bare bones after the coupon on the official website, or can be had with a black color scheme for $430 US on Amazon after the coupon, with a 32GB memory, 1TB storage configuration. The K7's case is made of plastic, which feels like a downgrade from the GMK Tech M3 that had a metal middle section. At least the plastic is good quality, and it feels solid in the hands. Apart from the removable top lid, which does creak a bit. This mini PC comes with a smaller than average 120 watt power supply, monitor mount, and screwdriver. Plastic prying tool, HDMI, and user guide. It's one of the few minis including the tools to actually open it up, which I think is a nice addition. The front has a reset and power button, along with an audio jack and USB 4 40 gigabit port. There's also dual USB 3 10 gigabit. Back has another couple of USB 3 10 gigabit ports, DisplayPort 1.4, HDMI 2.0, and dual Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN. Jim Ktex K7 is powered by a barrel jack connector. Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth connectivity is handled by the Intel AX201 module. Windows 11 Pro is pre-installed on all configurations except the bare bones where you need to bring your own memory, storage, and OS. Ubuntu works fine off a USB drive, if that's your OS preference. So far, opening all the GMK Tech minis has been straightforward, and this one's no different. Pop open the top lid, and remove the four screws. The included prying tool helps for lifting this cover with the cooling fan on it. Just watch out for the attached cable. So, this Mini has two M.2 Gen 4 NVMe slots, and the main 1TB storage included here comes with a heatsink. Also included with my review unit, 32GB of DDR5 4800 memory. Underneath the storage drive is the M.2 Wi-Fi Bluetooth card. It's all cooled with the fan we unscrewed earlier. It's been a while since I reviewed the previous generation i5-12500H, but I've got the data for it, so Let's see how the successor holds up. In single core, the 13500H is at the upper end of the performance chart, but it's not even a 1% increase over the previous gen. So, let's move on. Multicore, there's a nice improvement. There are a few power modes in the BIOS, including Quite, but I tested the default balanced and performance. With balance, there's a 21% increase. And with performance mode, it jumps up to almost 28%. The margin narrows in video encoding for both, 16 and 17%. Integrated graphics see a double digit bump up, 15% in DX11 and 14% in DX12. A decent generational improvement. It won't compete with AMD's latest CPUs in gaming, but has some advantages for tasks such as video editing thanks to its hardware decoding. The K7 supports Gen 4 and VME on both slots. Then the included drive is Gen 3. You lose some sequential read and write speeds, but for most users, it won't make a difference. 4K video editing on the 13500H is a pretty good experience. Scrubbing across the timeline is responsive, thanks to Intel's QuickSync hardware decoding. I do recommend Intel Minis over AMD if your main task is video editing or even multimedia work. 
as a faster single core also comes in handy. Intel's iGPUs are capable of some light gaming if that's your plan. Most of their eSports games can be played at decent or good frame rates. Over 200 in League of Legends. Unfortunately, I couldn't get Valorant to work on this mini. It's a good title to test as the requirements are Secure Boot and TPM 2.0. I've checked the settings and can't find it there. I mentioned this issue to GMK Tech during the review process and I'm happy to report a BIOS fix is now on the way for existing units. The minis being produced after this video should have the updated BIOS already installed. So moving on, Counter-Strike 2 has a frame rate range of 80 to 100 at the 1080p low settings. And Dota 2 is mostly above 120. The battle begins. An older game like Grand Theft Auto 5 runs fine. But a newer one like Forza Horizon 5, which has lower requirements than the average AAA game, doesn't hold up too well at 1080p. Wii U emulation will be fine on this box. Breath of the Wild runs decently close to 60fps at 1080p, so the rest of the game library should be no problem. Wipeout is a bit further off 60fps using the PS3 emulator. This game isn't the most demanding, and you might need to drop the resolution down to 720p to help get more games running at full speed. And if you want to supercharge the K7 with an eGPU, you can. Here I'm testing a game at 4K using an RTX 3070 graphics card through the USB 4 port. Still want me to tie it to the boat? Idle Power Draw came back with the same result as the previous generation Mini, while the maximum is around the same ballpark too. Slightly higher for performance mode. CPU temp for this mid-range Mini is around the middle. Performance mode only added an extra degree. Noise levels are on the higher side, and as expected, the performance mode raises the noise level even more. A heatsink on the NVMe drive plus a fan helps keep it cool in the K7. No worries here at all. Here are some bias options you might find useful. Alright, let's summarize the findings. Jim Katex K7 provides a decent performance improvement over the i5 12500H Mini, making it one of the highest mid-tier minis. This cooling for the storage and memory, which is great. USB 4 and dual M.2 Gen 4 NVMe is nice to see as well. I'm really liking the expanded accessory kit, which provides you with the tools to open the mini yourself. However, gone is the metal case, which has been switched to all plastic. Intel's gaming performance is lacking, and the Mini isn't the quietest one around unless you're willing to sacrifice performance and use the quiet mode. I mean quiet, sorry. The i5-13500H manages to beat the i7s from the previous generation in most metrics, and the Nuckbox K7 performs well. But if you're looking for something a little less powerful to save some dollars, Check out my review of GMK Tech's Nuckbox M3, which comes with Intel's i5-12450H CPU. Cheers!